everyone and welcome along to round number seven of the Veloci Esports Squad Sprint. We've arrived in the desert of Bahrain and uh, we are going round a slightly different track from the traditional layout. That's right, we're going to go back to what they did at the Sakir Grand Prix last year. It provided a great race, which Sergio Perez won, so why don't we do that? Seems like a good call, George. It certainly does, Andy. I have to say, Fiesta in the desert. Fixed setups, one-stop mandatory, soft tyre mandatory as standard. Can't wait for this one. A very fast-paced circuit, despite the lack of corners. Yeah, it should be brilliant. It, it, it's plenty of long straights though isn't there plenty of opportunity for overtaking you can see the calendar there on your right hand side two races to go the championship getting ever closer for James Baldwin I wonder if he can wrap it up today around before the finish let's have a look at today's starting grid it's Alex Gillen starting on pole with Neren Yusufu alongside in second third on the grid it's Arif for team quadrant with Steve Brown his teammate in fourth Maxime Byman lines up fifth for Veloci with Hayden Gullis in sixth Tom Martinez lines up in seventh with James Doherty in eighth Danny Beresney starts from P9, and running out the top 10 is Simon Vigang. Uh, taking the bottom 10, Andrea Kaposha there as well, Yaroslav Honzik in P12, Eamon Murphy P13, Ben Daly P14, Emily Jones P15, James Baldwin P16 for McLaren Shadow, Danny Moreno in P17, Bono Huiz P18, Yana Watmia rounding the grid off, P19. We've not got too much team news tonight then. The only thing is that the All-Stars are one-legged. We've got no Louis Delatraz and no Thibaut Courtois tonight. But all the talk is about the Drivers' Championship. James Baldwin sits at 109 points with Jarno Otmir and Tom Martinez on 70, 39 points back. If they don't outscore James tonight by 14 points, the Championship is over before the final round, George. Yeah, it certainly is. James Baldwin has been absolutely incredible this season. Serial winner here at Squad Sprint. And we've seen so many key battles between him and the Flying Dutchman, Jarno Watmir. But do not count out Tom Martinez. He has been superb picking up race wins this season as well. Yeah, he has, without doubt, been the star of the season. The big surprise package. Will there be any surprises here today as we are in the penultimate round of the championship? The lights are on and we are racing here in Bahrain on the oval circuit as they run down towards turn one. It's Alex Gillen in the lead of this race. Who will get to the first corner first? It looks like it's going to be him. We've got Arif moving into second place and we've got one of the quadrants going for a spin. I think that's Neren in the background going round and from the front row, he's down to the very back of the ground. But it's Alex Gillen leading them on their way up the hill as we now switch back to Simon rejoining the racetrack and being overtaken on the right by Yaroslav Honzik, George. Yeah, tremendous start indeed by Alex Gillen. Got away so cleanly. I wish I could say the same for Niran Yusufu in the Quadrant car, but uh, there we can see James Doherty there under pressure from Danny Moreno as they wind their way through the next sector. Of course, this is the very tricky part where you've got to wind your way through the corners before you access your way down towards the final three bends. Of course, turn nine leading down towards the long straight. Here we got these two coming to blows now. That's Maxime Byman going wheel to wheel with Eamon Murphy. And getting really squeezed there on the outset. Didn't get the cleanest of breakaways. And this is going to open it up for Steve Brown to lay down a charge here, Andy. Look at Arif weaving his way down the start finish straight. He's got ahead of Alex Gillen somewhere in here. I didn't see how he done that, but Arif is up into the lead of the race as we see Brown and Byman going side by side into turn one. And it looks like Brown has got the move done and moves himself up into fifth position. Maxine Byman's down into sixth place on lap two out of 26. It's such a short racetrack here. We've got 26 laps ahead of the drivers as we now go back further down the field to Ben Daly, he's looking left, looking right in that McLaren shadow car, no way through uh, in the early laps with so many drivers uh, in, in a similar part of the racetrack, there was just no path for him to make a move at the top of the hill, but we're on board with Daly, he's down in 16th at the minute as we're seeing Brown on the left hand side tumble down the order, as now Alex Gillen, look at this, we're almost three wide, look at Tom Martinez, he's at a flying start, Alex Gillen then gets ahead of Arif and now Looks like Tom Martinez is going to get involved as well as they all make their way down the start finish straight towards turn one. Yeah, casual exchange there indeed by Alex Gillen and Arriva, who has been absolutely prolific in the first laps of our last couple of races. Remember his action in Brazil as they go wheel to wheel again. Here comes Martinez, splitting the difference between the all-star car and the quadrant. Not able though to take advantage. Arriva manages to sneak past there. Alex Gillen trying to hold off the force. In comes a Yasika this time of what looks to be Eamon Murphy. 
Jeffy, who has come to join the field as they round three wide round the next right hander. Still, it's going to be Alex Gillard on top. Aaron is there now going wheel to wheel with Tom Martinez. It's Veloce v Quadrant. Round comes the Veloce car. Martinez with a great move. Moves up the P2. And that's exactly what he's been doing all season. Mr. Consistent back yet again. It's exactly what he's needed to do, oh, he's been doing all season, it's also exactly what he needs to do today to keep this championship going. Baldwin, by the way, is still making progress, he's up to 8th place, but if Martinez wants to keep this championship going to the final round, he needs a strong result, and it's a very strong start. The issue is, Baldwin's also flying so far in the early laps. It's Alex Killen leading them across the line on lap number 4, and who's this? This is Arif, pulling out from behind Eamon Murphy, going down the inside of Eamon Murphy, going deep into the corner, and then on the exit. Eamon Murphy says thank you very much I'll take that straight back and moves himself up into third place as we sh shuffle down the order to James Baldwin who is now beginning to make that progress he needs to earn his first championship in squad sprint three seasons now Danny Beresley's won two of them Baldwin looking to be the man to try and win the third season George Oh, he's, he's relentless, Andy. Absolutely relentless. Takes no prisoners. And here's another man that takes no prisoners. Jarno Otmir, of course. Remember, himself and James Baldwin tangled before here in the series. And I hope you will be watching back on all the episodes we've done here, of course. You've, there's been so much action to commentate on. Certainly for me and Andy, as Otmir sweeps by. Uh, certainly Danny Berezne, absolutely in scintillating stuff by the Flying Dutchman. Flew past Berezne there and moves his way up into P7. Superb by the F1 Esports World champion. And look at this going down the start finish rate, weaving left and right as Jarno Opmia. They are trying to stay ahead in that battle um, into that first corner uh, with Beresney right behind him and Bono who is in there as well. Quite a train of cars but you know this is what we saw in real life. A lot of slipstreaming around this oval racetrack with only three really long straights and uh, provided great racing uh, when Formula 1 did this and uh, it's providing great racing so far in the squad sprint as we go watching Danny Moreno then as he chases down James Baldwin. Baldwin's just got up to fifth place now. He's absolutely flying at the minute as James Baldwin and uh, if he's in the top four no matter what Tom Martinez does, no matter what Jan Watmir does, he will be champion as we have got out of facing the wrong way and that now does move Baldwin up into the top four. Stay there and he is champion. Yeah, not good at all for the Quadrant team. All three cars now in the bottom echelons of the classification. Not good to see at all. They've had a very turbulent season. And uh, looking at the top order as well, James Baldwin, well, moving his way, making some serious moves, as you quite rightly say. And we're now clued back into the action here. Bono Huiz now also tangling with Danny Berezne and sweeps past heading into turn one. Once again, the switch back up and opens up for Berezne, but nothing uh, returns as he loses a little bit of traction heading on the outset. But Bono Huiz now aims to close off the inside line as they make their way towards the next right-hander. Still the Mercedes on top, and he will hold on to that P7. Currently Mercedes in a string, P5, 6 and seven, Huis currently in behind of those, those three, Otmir and Moreno making up piece five and six. Yeah, it's uh, something we've seen very often from Yas Heat, isn't it, this season? They've been consistent, they've been reasonable, they've kind of been in that kind of fifth, sixth, seventh, all in a line, consistent results, but it's Mercedes now in this particular race that are all uh, tied in together. For Yas Heat today, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Murphy third, Hodzik ninth, and Kaposha down in 15th. They're usually so tight together in the order as we look from the rear wing of Tom Martinez who has been the star of the season without doubt winning that opening race back at Silverstone everyone kind of just raised an eyebrow in shock as uh, we now look at Beresny being overtaken into turn one by Yaroslav Honzik in the Yas Heat car so through goes Honzik Beresny the Hungarian driver dropping down to ninth place and really really all over the road and doesn't look too comfortable at all in that Alfa Romeo car at the minute does he? No, no, a bit of a, hum, a bit of a bump over the curbs there. It's certainly a very unforgiving circuit uh, here at Bahrain. Of course, it may be quick, it may be minimal corners, but the, the corners that are on the track can sometimes be a little bit tough to negotiate. Certainly when you've got chicanes like this, when you're coming into it at such top high speeds, you've got to slam on the brakes, and naturally it can be ever so tricky to master. And uh, I have to say, it can catch even the best off guard. As we now witness them head down towards the next right hander. There you can see in front of him, Yaroslav Honzik, the three Mercedes cars as well, in a string, in the distance. Now, good points can be earned here by Mercedes and take the team championship right to the grand finale at Abu Dhabi as they now make their way down towards turn one. And already we're now seeing 
Tom Martinez starting to just tented tentatively close on Alex Gillen. In behind Eamon Murphy, Yasheed enjoying another positive day so far with their man in P3. Baldwin starting to move his way. There he is in the distance. The man vying to become the driver's champion here at Squad Sprint. It's going to be scintillating to see whether he can do it. He's not far away, approximately one and a half seconds back. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Tom Martinez, if he starts to see that McLaren shadow in his mirrors, I think his heart will sink a little bit, won't it? As, uh, I think Alex Gillen went off. He did go off. He's off in the background, and the race leader, Alex Gillen, is round and out of the lead of this Grand Prix. I think that's the third or fourth route time this season. He's been had a really solid start and had a moment and lost the lead, and he drops all the way down to eighth place. That promotes Tom Martinez up into a position where he could perhaps win for the second time this season. The problem for him with Baldwin in third, it means absolutely nothing as they all slipstream down the straight once again. Lap nine now here in this race. The laps are ticking by quickly as we look at Hornsick try and go right round the outside of Danny Moreno and try and break that Mercedes train. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful stuff from Yaroslav Hornsick round the outside of Danny Moreno as if he wasn't even there. And Hornsick sweeps up into sixth position, George. Epic. Yeah. Huge scalp there by Yaroslav Honzik. The machine Danny Moreno was left sleeping, or caught napping, should I say, heading around that chicane. And it opened the door and uh, certainly took advantage. Yaroslav Honzik, so dangerous. And uh, I've got to say, you want to keep your beady eyes on him. He's absolutely incredible. He certainly provided us with many scenes to watch as we now witness Emily Jones making her way around this circuit. In behind as well, uh, you also have uh, the quadrant contingent there as well. There's Ben Daly. Uh, also with her as well. This is Ben Daly now who are riding on board with him behind. You can see from the rear wing there it's Emily Jones' teammate of course and uh, they're, they're really well tightly knit together at this moment in time. Uh, their teammate James Baldwin though flying the flag for Team McLaren P3 as things stand. There's the uh, front end of the of Emily Jones' McLaren there trying to get into the slipstream of teammate Ben Daly. No team orders here this time. Ben Daly certainly not giving the position up as they come into turn one, breaking in the hundred. And Emily Jones oh. with an aggressive move. Oh, a bit of a rubbing of shoulders there. And Emily Jones gave a cropper in that situation and it's it. But she still got through. Credit to it. Incredible manoeuvre. It certainly was very brave. Yes, not what McLaren and Shadow need when they're in a championship fight from, with Mercedes and a few others for that team's championship that you mentioned a moment ago, George. With Mercedes 4th, 5th and 7th, they can't be scrapping with each other and making contact when they're just on the fringes of the points. They need to work together and try and get onto the back of the Alfa Romeos that are 8th, 9th and 10th at the minute. They need all those points because at the minute it's James Baldwin doing the heavy work. A bit like Tom Martinez is doing the heavy work with Falocci this season. Although, to be fair to Hayden Gullis, he did pick up some points last week, didn't he? <laughs> at last. Yeah, at last. I mean, I've got to say, the top 10 finish, it was certainly you know, something special to see. And I know you made him your driver of the day last week as well, Andy. And I think you are quite right. He did absolutely absolutely deserve it because of course he's been racing all season has, has sort of been uh, the bridesmaid never quite the bride on the occasion but he's made it this time and got his points on the board so uh, I've got to say surely it can only be up from here for our man Hayden Gullis but obviously we'll keep an eye on him hopefully he can get some more and uh, he's currently in P15 we're currently witnessing Eamon Murphy now tagging on the rear of Tom Martinez he's going to try and make the Veloce man a little bit more uncomfortable here of course Martinez experienced race winner here in squad sprint Eamon Murphy certainly not someone to be messed with and Yassi once again a great solid performance they've got Yaroslav Honzik down in P6 uh, Kaposha currently down in P14 so you know d don't knock off Yassi they've been very good this season yeah they have been very good as we now goes down and start finish straight to begin lap number 12 and it looks like it's starting to close up at the front James Baldwin trying to eat into the gap at the minute but he's unable to get close enough to these guys but it's certainly looking like it could be turning into a three horse race perhaps a four horse race very soon at the front a really competitive race at the minute as we go back to Steve Brown and he's under pressure from Andrea Kaposha and Kaposha is going to try and go round the outside Brown defends the inside Kaposha round the outside trying the Honzik move can't quite pull the Honzik move off but into turn two he's got the high ground and he's through now and up into 13th place if your teammate can do it so can you and that's a lovely move from Kaposha ahead of Steve Brown and up into 13th place yeah, Capoccia there with a great move indeed and uh, managed to dispatch Steve Brown there a quadrant and certainly Steve Brown is not someone to be messed with as well. He can certainly knock up a positive result or two. We've seen him in the midst of several battles so do not count him out either. Plenty of quality here across this grid of course. Don't forget here at Squad Sprint we like to open the doors to many uh, different kinds in the world of 
uh, sim racing and esports as we're now witnessing Capoccia once again looking to do another move here this time on Ben Daly and uh, will he take this one as well this is going to be a scintillating lap here lap 13 with 26 and as he makes his way down the stretch they go wheel to wheel the McLaren shadow car with the ass heat driver of, of Capoccia there who immediately dives it back into the slipstream finds a little bit of additional pace as they make their way down towards turn one here in lap 13 of 26 as they break just after the 100 nice and smooth easily does it textbook maneuver Capoccia up to P12 Kaposha on an absolute roll. P12 now. I've got to say, see, see the cars. I wonder what the viewers think. See on board. I think they sound so good on this game. They sound brilliant. Uh, especially when they're wheel to wheel at high speed going side by side down the straight. And Kaposha, uh, through he goes, up ahead of Ben Daly and now splits those two McLaren shadows and is on the move after Emily Jones now. But here is Steve Brown, who's just been overtaken by Kaposha as has Daly just in front and they'll be scrapping over P13 in a minute. We've just gone past half distance here at uh, the Bahrain Oval Circuit and it's Martinez in the lead with Murphy second and Baldwin in third with Otmir chasing MP4. The gap's at the front closing all the while as uh, we see Steve Brown now try and get into the slipstream down the start finish rate. It almost looked like a late move to the pits there for Ben Daly but no it was a defensive move to try and break the toe. It's going to be to no avail though because Brown is down the inside and I think Brown is going to surely get this move done. He breaks that little bit later than uh, than uh, Daly and squeezes himself through and is up into 13th place. We've seen a few great moves around the outside at turn one. Add that to the list George. Yeah, it certainly looks like the opportune moment to strike. Certainly if you're in the midst of a slipstream and uh, can open up the door, potentially plug your way up a spot as we're now witnessing once again Tom Martinez and the gap once again cascading downwards. Eamon Murphy might get his chance here uh, heading into lap 15. As you can now see them and, uh, as they make their way past the DRS boards, the squad sprint banners lit on all across the track. And uh, there in the distance you can see the, oh. the RC car. Was there a car that just cascaded off the track there, uh, Andy? Yeah, I think it was Danny Beresney that just went straight off the track and uh, a big moment for the Alfa Romeo and dropping, I think, out of the Grand Prix. So that's a real shame for the Alfa Romeo, but it's Tom Martinez at the minute in the lead of the race. But look at it all closing up now. We've got Murphy in there for Yassit. We've got the Veloci, of course, of Martinez himself. We've got McLaren, Shadow and Baldwin and potentially Jarno Opnir as well. So four different constructors all fighting potentially for the race win here in Bahrain and that is exactly what we are looking for. That would be really, really exciting. What a way to whet your appetite with 11 laps to go here. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is looking very exciting. And here goes Chase Baldwin down the inside on Eamon Murphy. And through goes the championship leader. And now, surely he can chase after one of his championship rivals. But hold on a minute. Eamon Murphy is not finished. And he's pulling back alongside, going down the start finish straight towards turn one. Murphy on the left. It's Baldwin on the right. Baldwin tries to break late. It has something that's been something that's worked out for drivers and it works for Baldwin as well. That outside just so, so powerful and it works for Baldwin and he's back through and up into second place. But here comes Murphy again, round the outside, up to the top of the hill. But Baldwin's got the high ground and he is finally through for sure and has got second place. Oh, I love this, Andy. Absolutely brilliant. Eamon Murphy, despite being endurance racers, certainly Yassid have risen to the occasion here in the Squad Sprint Series. But look at the Flying Dutchman, Jarno Watme, who's been watching all this unfold. It's allowed him to come into the game, and he's got alongside there in the black hour of the Mercedes. Jarno Watme looking to do what he has done all season, overtake after overtake. The Dutchman strikes, takes the inside line, still wheel to wheel on the outset. Brilliant stuff as they made their way down the home straight. And indeed, Murphy gets pushed off the track, loses a lot of time, dives into the pit lane but we're set up here with a potential battle between two of the best in f1 esports it's on me and baldwin let's see it again oh now that would be very interesting we've had it once this season are we lucky enough to maybe get it twice i hope so well there's not long to go in this race and of course these drivers are all in the hard compound and uh, they will be going on to the soft compound later on so we could have a potential war in the pits as well here so things are shaping up very nicely here in Bahrain, but is that exactly what Tom Martinez is looking for? Maybe a battle between those two, but at the minute, he's the one being reeled in by James Baldwin, and if Baldwin passes him, you can pretty much guarantee that it's curtains for Martinez in this championship. But Baldwin is gaining and gaining. Otmia just stalking the pair, hoping for any drama, anything that can get him involved. But round this final corner they go, and look at that, Martinez a little bit squirrely at the rear end, and he's going into the pits now, it looks like. And they're both coming in, they're all coming in, the three of them, all in the pits together. Unbelievable. You can see Martinez sliding at the rear there. No, Otmia did not come in, he carried on. But in comes uh, 
Baldwin, and in comes Martinez. This could be a race in the pit. Yeah, an interesting dynamic here, Andy. Of course, we have to see how this pit stop certainly affects the race, of course. And obviously, being a quick circuit here in Bahrain, you'd imagine that if you are stuck in for a long time, that can have a very, very uh, big effect on your performance in this race. You can now see the cars beginning to peel past Tom Martinez. Here comes Baldwin! down the inside oh my word straight from the pit exit and scoops his way down down i have to say brilliant tom martinez didn't get time to blink and uh, baldwin attacked as they're making their way down the stretch and the mclaren shadow driver as well as the veloce car three wide in between or oh. outside of a quadrant car scintillating stuff dancing on here it's like dancing on ice here at bahrain despite it being the desert circuit as they come around the next right hander but martinez has managed to grasp the advantage he's up in a p4 baldwin though licking his wounds i'm sure he'd be back he'll be looking to strike again i'm sure I'll tell you what my smile is so wide that is absolutely excellent opportunistic driving from both of them baldwin trying that down the inside on the pit exit that's just so cheeky and then martinez outsmarts him goes around the outside of the car in between them and flies through absolutely sensational from martinez and he gets himself back ahead of baldwin and that is so so crucial as opmir has been in the pits and rejoins crucially behind this duo but also crucial he's ahead of of that quadrant car so he's now free to chase after them on one lap fresher tires and at the minute he's still stuck behind Jim, uh, Tom Martinez as James Baldwin he'll want to clear him he's clearly quicker at this stage of the race before Jarno Otmir arrives on the scene the F1 Esports world champion oh this is great racing I just love the battling on the on the pit lap absolutely incredible on the exit uh, of the pit lane from James Baldwin and then a favour return by Tom Martinez only a few corners later but look at this then down the straight they go and Baldwin looks like he's going to try and go round the outside of Martinez into the final turn won't happen there it's going to have to be down the pit straight George yeah, Martinez has only got one thing on his mind. He needs to bring the Dutchman into the game. He wants to give James Baldwin a little bit of added pressure, trying to take the sting out of this. But Baldwin, ever experienced, professionalism, certainly in abundance as he makes his way on the outset, heading into turn one. Brilliant stuff. The McLaren Shadow Card is snooping on the outside of the Veloce oh. team as they make their way into the next couple of bends, heading out of turn three, down the long stretch. The McLaren Shadow has his number. He dials P1, but still, in comes on the outside top. Martinez owning P1 spot, still Baldwin. Great switch back there from Martinez. Looks for the second move, but could not find it. And Omnia stalking these two. He's a man on a mission, is Baldwin, but he cannot hold off this, this rampant Tom Martinez, who's still very much in the slipstream. Here comes Omnia, though. But down the end, inside of Tom Martinez, a three way dance here. Martinez losing out two places in the space of one lap here in lap 20 of 26. The Flying Dutchman dives down the outside. It's official. Battle for P1, Baldwin v Opmir, Baldwin v, v Opmir. Oh, oh, here we go, folks. This is going to be absolutely sensational. Five laps to go here in Bahrain. It's been brilliant up till now. What a drive it's been from Tom Martinez again. Again, exceeding expectations week after week. But he has to realise that he's up against some serious quality. And I've got to tip my hat to him. He's done so well to be in this for so long. But finally, Opmir is now going to get himself involved. And it does look like Martinez has done enough to hold Baldwin up. Uh, at the moment to get into this battle there is a car directly in front there is not of course James Baldwin I think that's a lapped car of one of the uh, Yas Heat cars but uh, can Baldwin break away we'll have to wait and see or can Jarno Opnia get himself involved in the battle with the McLaren shadow man James Baldwin out front certainly looks very quick does Opnia but let's see if we can get there before the end well, we certainly will see indeed. Lap 21 and 26, at least for now, folks. Eventually, they will be commencing the next lap in this race, of course. And, and there you can see Bono Huis there in behind. Indeed, Eamon Murphy. And uh, looking to at least do, pull a number here on the ass heat car. Dives in on the inside. Does Eamon Murphy trying to break any sort of the slipstream? Is unable to do so in a very rampant Bono Huis as well. Moving that Mercedes car further up the grid. They go wheel to wheel again, but he has the inside line and benefits. Certainly off the back of that P4. Now for Bono Huis. They've got to say Mercedes. He's looking very good at this moment in time, but he's not done yet. David Murphy looks on the outside, but cannot find the access. A little switch back, uh, indeed, there from Eamon Murphy. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the ass heat lately. They've certainly have not gone, well, they've, they've gone down swinging, certainly. Whenever they've been fighting for places, they deserve every bit of respect, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. My mistake, folks. I thought that was uh, out of position, uh, yes, heat car. No, not at all. It's uh, Bonnevis, as you said, George, going ahead of uh, 
Eamon Murphy. So Baldwin and Ockmere are, are still tied together at the front of the field, no doubt about it. But uh, that's good points then for Mercedes. Second, fourth and seventh at the minute as they go down the start finish straight is... Jarno Otme are going to be close enough for a move on James Baldwin. He's having a little look into that first corner, but it's no more than a look. Tom Martinez just trying to stay in touch, trying to cling on to that podium. And if anything happens between the two leaders, he will be more than happy to take the place. But we're looking at Bono Gleach at the minute, and he's trying to close in as well on that group. Lap 23 now, out of 26, and it's getting better and better this race. It's really hotting up towards the finale, and I cannot wait to see how these final few laps unfold, George. Yeah, well, certainly the gap is increasing now between Huis and Murphy already. And that, that Mercedes certainly finds some great straight line speed. Martinez with a mistake! Martinez with an error there, heading around those initial set. Well, certainly there was a couple of bends uh, heading through sector two, and it cost him massively. He went wide and opened the door for Huis. Now, Mercedes have got two on the podium right now, and that's going to be absolutely massive if you consider the fact that Emily Jones down in P12, so is Ben Dania maneuver now between Otmir and Baldwin now once again. And still, Otmir fighting back trying to fight tooth and nail upon James Bond with a wheel to wheel into turn one the flying Dutchman against the world's fastest gamer as they do so round the sectors and tug in the back there by by Omir on Baldwin Baldwin manages to relent hold on to P1 Omir in P2 he's going to be back though keep your eyes peeled well, the tables have turned from Turkey, haven't they? All of a sudden, it's Obmia that's the chaser. It's Baldwin that's going to have to do the defending here. Oh, how things can change in the squad sprint. A few rounds ago, Baldwin. Baldwin was the man to beat, but Obmia now clearly has the pace at the minute. And he's hunting down the world's fastest gamer. Once again, it's the two heavyweights of the world of motorsports, of esports. It's going to be Baldwin versus Obmia. Buckle up your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a frenetic, a Fantastic, a sensational two laps to go towards the end of this Grand Prix. It's going to be brilliant. Here comes Opmir again. He's gaining and gaining on the back of James Baldwin down into that first corner. Is he going to go diving down the inside? No, not on this occasion. He stays tucked in behind that McLaren shadow and the Mercedes man will just wait and wait and wait for the right moment to arrive. Yeah, you viewers at home are going to be, well, certainly watching on in shock as we're now witnessing once again a test of strength between two of the best in the world of professional sim racing and esports. And I have to say, things don't change here at Squad Sprint, certainly. We're in shock as much as you are, folks, as we're now watching the Mercedes whittling his way around this next uh, couple of bends, certainly making his way down the long stretch very shortly and behind the McLaren Shadow car of James Baldwin. Certainly, Turkey brought back here in the face of Bahrain, but this time we're under different circumstances you quite rightly point out here Andy they're coming down now about to start the final lap of this race it's Baldwin still v Otmir but Otmir now cruising on the rear of that McLaren shadow car that blue rear wing now witnessing a black livery alongside it it's Mano Omano down towards turn one quadrant cars leaving the pit lane but still in comes Baldwin he holds on incredible stuff indeed Otmir opts to try the inside line tries the outside cannot find the answer but as they come down the stretch once again Otmir alongside Baldwin now for the lead of the race and this will potentially upset the championship we're not quite sure Baldwin currently on top they're wheel to wheel once again it's a real tussle a hustle as they make their way around the next right hander whittling their way through the beds amazing stuff Andy I cannot take my eyes off this Incredible stuff, Baldwin still defending, but we're in the final few corners, and look at Bono Huis out of absolutely nowhere, getting himself involved, but here come the two leaders, look at Huis going down the inside almost, Opmia tries the outside on Baldwin, oh, and he's, he's going to get squeezed, he's had a moment, what a massive moment, and now Huis in the run to the line, he will not get there in time, and James Baldwin has done it, he's won the race, but crucially, he has won the Squad Sprint Championship. Season 3 belongs to the world's fastest gamer, and James Baldwin wins a breathless race between he, Jan Ockmere, and belatedly, Bono Huis. Unbelievable, George. Oh, credit to the world's fastest gamer. He's not called that for no reason. He wins the Drivers' Championship. Incredible stuff. Well, let's take a look at the results from that race. The results that confirm James Baldwin as the squad sprint champion. He is the winner, of course, with Bono Huis snatching that second place from his teammate in the final corner. What a finish. Jarno Otmir was third, of course, with Tom Martinez. He'll be disappointed with fourth, having led for so long. Eamon Murphy was fifth with Yaroslav Honzik in sixth. 
Danny Moreno picking up six points in seventh handy for Mercedes because they need the points to try and secure that constructors title. Sam Vigang in eighth with four points. Andrea Caposha in ninth getting two points. And Alex Gillen, the man who led in the early exchanges, came home tenth with one point. And in the bottom half of the order, James Doherty came home in 11th with Emily Jones in 12th. Hearing Gullis, P13 with Maxine Byman in 14th. Steve Brown was 15th. Ben Daly, 16th. Neren Yusuf was 17th. Arif was 18th. And Danny Beresney failed to see the finish. And now time, George, to have a look at this driver standings and what it means for James Baldwin. Absolutely. Well, it uh, pretty much wraps things up here. James Baldwin, 134 points. Uh, he is currently sitting on P1 and will stay on P1. He's your champion for this season's squad sprint in the Drivers' Championship. Tiana Watmiel, the Flying Dutchman, 85 points, just goes three points ahead of Tom Martinez there in P3. Uh, P4 goes to Bono Huis uh, at this moment in time, 76 points level with Eamon Murphy, who's in P5 in the Championship. Yaroslav Honzik in P6 on 48 points. Barry Burraman. Uh, there as well, 47 points, obviously wasn't there racing today. Simon Weigang, P8 on 40 points. Danny Moreno, P9 on 38 points. Danny Berezne, P10 on 27 points. And uh, then moving on to the Constructors. Yeah, well, let's have a look at the Constructor standings then. And it's now Mercedes who are top with 199 points. They are 49 points clear of second place McLaren Shadow. That is not enough to crown them champions. Uh, 59 points is what they need. Uh, to be clear going into that final round so it will go the distance uh, between them Yassi just about no longer able to get into the battle 60 points back in third so it's Mercedes McLaren and Yassi Heat then fourth for Alfa Romeo in 108 Veloci Esports on 84 almost all of them coming from Tom Martinez Team Quadrant are sixth with 20 points and All Stars have one more round to get themselves off the bottom of the table so, George, it's that time of the day again where we talk about our driver of the day. It was an epic race, epic battles everywhere. Who are you going for? Oh, well, I, I've got to say, you've got to give it to the champion of new. I've got to say, James Baldwin, what a drive and what a, a grandstand finish. Three cars taking it to the line. But credit where credit's due. James Baldwin, for me, the new champion of squad sprint and deservedly so as well in terms of the driver's title. Uh, as for the constructors, obviously it's still up for question, uh, but you've got to give Mercedes credit. They did it the right way. Jana Watmir uh, there in second place and also Bonnie Huis as well. So watch out for them next week. And, uh, you know, true to form, or back in form, I should say, between us two, George, I'm going to have to agree with you again. We had a slight disagreement on the driver of the day last week, but yeah, I think it's a slam dunk, isn't it? James Baldwin for me, one of the drivers of the season, alongside Tom Martinez, I suppose, but he's the driver of the day today. He wins the title. He wins the race in fine style as well he's my driver of the day too but of course we want to hear who your driver of the day is here at Veloce let us know on Veloce Esports Twitter account and the poll who your driver of the day is let us know in the comment section below if you think Mercedes can win the title or if the 49 gap point gap can be overhauled by McLaren Shadow to see them win the team's title that's all from us we've got one more round sadly of squad sprint to go be sure to join us at the same time again next week, 1pm, as we head to Abu Dhabi. Goodbye.